Breonna Taylor was born on June 5th, 1993 in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Her and her family moved to Louisville, Kentucky. She attended local schools and graduated from Western High School in Louisville in 2011. She attended the University of Kentucky and then became an emergency medical technician for the city of Louisville. She worked for Jewish East Medical Center as a full-time emergency room technician and a practicing registered nurse for Northern Healthcare. Her dream was to become a nurse. Her family described her as a loving and caring person. She spent much of her life helping others. George Floyd was born on October 14, 1973 in Fayetteville, North Carolina. He was one of four children. His childhood nickname was Big Floyd because he was six feet tall in middle school. He attended Yates High School where he was co-captain of the basketball team, playing as a power forward. He was also on the football team as a tight end. And in 1992, his team went to the state championships. He was the first in his family to attend college when he had attended South Florida Community College on a football scholarship. George went through many difficult years as an adult, but he moved to Minneapolis to rebuild his life. There, he worked security at many locations in the city. He had five children and two grandchildren. How have the killings of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor affected you emotionally and spiritually? The killings of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, they've affected me in, I could say, way more ways than emotionally and spiritually, but it just hurts seeing like your own people of your own skin color get killed for no reason whatsoever. And no matter what the past is, no matter what they did in their past, after their dead, that seems like that's the first thing they bring up, like, oh, he did this 10 years ago. but. That doesn't mean he deserves to die now. Mm, it made me realize back when Trayvon Martin got killed back in like 2012, I was too young and I like didn't really understand nothing. But now I'm older and like I realized, you know, it's like they died for no reason just because of the color of their skin. I feel like it didn't affect me as much as it probably should have. I feel like I've been very desensitized to the way black people have been treated since I've just seen it all my life. So I was very surprised at how not only America, but just the world reacted to it. Maybe it's because it actually was caught on tape this time. Um, I wasn't expecting for anybody to really do much about it. But yeah, I feel like I've been very desensitized to the black people being killed by authorities for just a long time now, so. So thinking about all of the events of 2020, for instance, the election, Black Lives Matter protests, even the events in January with the invasion of mm -hmm. the Capitol, how has that changed your perspective of Black history? It made me realize that what I thought had ended, like what I thought were just the 60s and the 50s and like the 40s, what was happening then was actually, is actually very much so still happening now. So the things that we like to call history that happened is still very much so prevalent now. It's just now being televised. It's just now being seen. As for like the Capitol building, I feel like um, white supremacy is something that, <laughs> it's something that takes place no matter just how bad the situation is. They didn't tear gas them. They didn't, sh they barely shoot at them, shot at them. And it's, it's so obvious at this point, they're not even trying to hide it. And I feel like, um, I'm just very happy that Biden won because I feel like it's, it, hopefully it'll get a little bit better now um, and you know, things will change, so. The main thing like right now that is, that will change like our country is the fact that um, Kamala um, is the vice president now, I think that's, a major like deal um, and I think with her being the vice president um, that'll like show like younger girls like they're like we can be leaders too. So how are you empowering yourself to endure during all of these difficult times? Uh, I go to church every Sunday I go in the prayer class that we've recently been having I like them by the way um, and yeah that's usually what I do makes me very happy. 
I feel like music is very much a, I guess a getaway in a way. Uh, distractions have been very much a big part of just getting through quarantine and just any bad time in my life. So um, escapism, I guess. During these difficult times, I'm trying to find my specific purpose um, on this earth, trying to find out what I'm here and what I'm meant to do. And I'm trying to help everybody around me find their purpose too. Oh, well, I would say that prayer, like that's the main thing that can keep me sane, I guess you could say. Um... One, I do stay up to date. Well, I try to stay up to date, but in a healthy balance, because sometimes when you dig too deep into the negativity, that can swallow you whole. But also reminding myself of the word that even though like all of this stuff is going on, the Lord is still keeping us. He's still protecting us. His blood still works and he still has an ultimate plan for us. I try to definitely stay grounded in what I know to be true. Um, even when the world is saying everything else that contradicts that. So what's giving you hope that things will change? How they reacted to George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, just how big of a reaction they had this time and I hope that keeps on happening. Going to church and listening listening to the message that Pastor gives us. Like the other day he was talking about how God is, you know, on the other side of the fog and you know, we'll get through this even though it's difficult right now. What okay, what gave me hope was the election. Honestly, like just seeing like that we have a new president now. Um and I, I can already like sense like stuff is changing already. Stuff is, you know, trying to get back into order. Well, my friends always used to tell me the saying that even though just because it's all stormy and the sun's not out right now, it doesn't mean the sun won't come back out again. And that's just what's been keeping me hope that through all these tough times, like we will see better days eventually. It won't be like this forever. Who you are can't be duplicated. Um, and regardless of what society says, people of other races say, people who just aren't against you say to you or against you. Um, ultimately, what God says is true. I know that sounds deep, but it's the truth. Like, ultimately, what He calls you will always be greater than what the world calls you. Um, so just stay confident to who you are and to what you know is true, because that's ultimately is what's going to last. So, I am. I am Ernesto Stallworth. I am Black History. I am empowered to endure. I am Black History. I am. I am empowered to endure.